What's good Raider Nation? It's your boy San G and today I want to discuss with you guys the conference call that Mike Mayock just had literally it just ended and I want to talk to you guys about it because over the next day or two a lot of what was said in that call you guys will probably start reading articles about you know news stories tweets from Raider analysts I want to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on what I kind of took from that conference call because it was kind of revealing and I think it really started with the very first statement that Mike Mayock was making because it wasn't a question right if you guys did not watch it uh, how, how the, the call kind of went was Mayock made a statement regarding the coronavirus um, and then he was asked a bunch of questions from a bunch of different reporters and that was all predetermined on which reporter was going to get to ask in the order um, and then at the end they kind of just left it open for anyone to ask questions in the intro segment of where uh, mayock was kind of talking about the coronavirus uh, he said something that in my opinion was kind of revealing right he was talking about how much each raider player or how much the owner has donated and he talked about how much he was going to donate and he talked about he's going to donate a thousand dollars per pick that the Raiders have. And right now the Raiders have seven picks. So that's $7,000 that he personally will be donating. So the interesting part was he said that if we trade up and we no longer have seven picks, the minimum we'll do donate is still $7,000. And I kind of found that interesting because if you trade up, of course you're gonna have to trade multiple picks, right? So first and a third, maybe you trade up and you get a higher pick, but why would you trade up, right? And the revealing part for me was the fact that it wasn't a question that was being asked. He was just kind of talking to say that if we trade up, the minimum will still be 7,000 kind of implies that there's a possibility we do trade up, right? And of course, there's always a possibility, right? Every year, but how many times has Gruden and Mayock traded up, right? Especially when you have a first round pick, getting into the top 10, you're not gonna do that unless you're taking a quarterback. Of course, a strong case could be made to take a player like Isaiah Simmons or Jeff Akuda, who I would not be mad at if we traded up to get. Of course, it depends on what we trade up to get, right? I would not trade more than uh, two picks. I would not trade multiple first round picks. Of course, unless it was a quarterback like uh, Tua, it doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense to trade up. Now, of course, talking a little bit about quarterbacks, Mayock was asked about his quarterback situation. And right now he says that he loves where they're at with their quarterback situation. He loves the fact that Dirk Carr's entering his third year in the same system. He's comfortable. He said that him and Gruden really liked Mariota when he was coming out of college and that they think they can build him back up, build his confidence up. And I think that's a, a great thing to stay, say about your, your quarterback room, right? He said that he was very happy with it. Moving on, a couple other things he was asked was regarding the free agents. And I think this was kind of revealing as well. He said, one, Corey Littleton can cover anyone, which we all know he pretty much can, because a lot of people regard him as one of the top tier linebackers in the NFL, especially in coverage. Uh, but then he said Nick Kwiatkowski will be wearing the green dot, which means that he will be most likely the middle linebacker in our defense. For most part, you don't really put, give the green dot to players who are not going to be leading that defense. So it's interesting that they already have that confidence in him. Asked about Carl Nassib as well. And he said that he really likes him because he reminds Mayock of Cleveland Farrell as well as Max Crosby. And it's crazy to think that we have three defensive ends that are big they're strong they're fast they're young right they're still fairly young and they can all get after the quarterback you know of course Farrell and Crosby are going to take that second year leap but uh, to kind of hear Mayock and how excited he was it got me excited you know so um, I'm excited man and he was asked about Demarius Randall and this was pretty interesting as well he was asked about Randall two different times the first time he said that Randall was the number one free safety coming out of college that right there to me kind of stated that that's what they probably see of him and then he was asked later on uh, the direct question of is he a free safety or, or is he a corner uh, Mayock said that to start the season off he will be a free safety but they love the fact that he can come down in the slot and he can cover wide receivers tight ends and that kind of good stuff uh, and that's interesting as well because that is something that Randall can do right his first three years, he had 12 interceptions, played corner all three years. So it is something he can do. Asked about Jason Witten. It's pretty much what we kind of thought, right? Which is Witten's, you know, he's not a full-time starter, right? That's Darren Waller. But Witten does a lot of good things and Mayock kind of touched on that. Uh, he said that he, even though he knows he's 37 years old, uh, he's a good tight end. He's a leader in the locker room, right? People are going to respect him. They're going to look up to him. Uh, and then more to just that, he had 60 catches last year, and on top of that, 
he can block the C gap very well. And of course, Jason Witten's a smart player, so he understands what he needs to do on certain situations. Uh, Darren Waller's a good tight end, but he's not a great blocking tight end, right? Not saying that he's bad, but he's just not great at it. Obviously, there's other tight ends we had last year that were better blockers than Darren Waller, uh, but Witten can come in and block, and I think that's going to be one of the things that they're going to really, really like about him. The interview was interesting. I mean, if you guys have not checked it out, you guys should definitely check it out. Uh, a couple other things that uh, Mike Mayock was asked about, one was uh, what he thought about our corners, and um, if he said that he really liked Trayvon Mullen. He, the second half of the year, he really came on strong, which I 100% agree with. I think Mullen's the real deal. You know, he looks really, really good. Uh, he also was asked, uh, just in general, if we were going to target a corner in this draft. Um, he said Isaiah Johnson has a bunch of physical traits that he likes. Uh, Keyshawn Nixon played well. Uh, he said we have four to five good young corners, but he did say that we'll let the dra we'll let the uh, the board kind of fall as is. We're not going to reach for anybody, which I think is the right thing to do. Right? You never want to reach for any player especially at the corner spot uh, there are really only two good corners in this draft that you know are, are guaranteed starters right off the bat after that it is kind of a drop off um obviously corner being one of the most important positions on defense corners tend to go higher than where they should but uh, cj henderson and jeff akuda are the two guys who are probably going to go in the top uh, 15 um and then after that, it's kind of a fall off and you probably won't see another corner get drafted until uh, maybe later on in the first round. And the talent of that that drop off from the corners probably, you know, there's probably second round to third round players. But because corners are so important, teams are going to kind of reach for those corners, right? Mayog did say that we can improve our corner spot. We can improve our wide receiving spot. And he was asked about our wide receivers. And he was asked in general about wide receivers. And then on top of that, he was asked about what he thought uh, between uh, Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, and C.D. Lamb. And I think this was kind of revealing as well. But on, on the wide receiving group just as a whole in the class, he said that on average, and he, say, he stated this during the combine interviews as well. He said on average there's about 12 to 13 wide receivers that go into the top three rounds. This year it'll be closer to 20 to 25, uh, which makes sense, right? There, there, uh, there's a lot of wide receivers in this class. He also stated that there's going to be guys this year in the fourth and fifth round that last year would have been going in the third, second or third round, right? Third round or higher is what, what his exact words were, uh, which is interesting because that is true. It's 100% true. Mayock was also asked uh, just in general about N Nelson Aguilar um, and he said that he really likes him but we still think we can improve and then he, a little bit later on he was asked about uh, what he thought about Ruggs, Judy and Lamb and uh, the reporter that asked it I think did a good job with that question because you know there's a lot of talk about who's the top tier wide receivers you know I have my opinions I don't think Henry Ruggs is a top tier wide or I don't think he's the top three wide receivers in this class I think there's other wide receivers that are better than him. Um, and I've you know, talked a lot about this on Twitter, on, on some of my other videos, so I'm not going to get into that. Uh, but he was asked, you know, who, what do you think about the top three wide receivers? And Mayock's first response was, well, my top three are probably different than your top three. So which three are you referring to? Now, it's kind of funny. Uh, and then the guy specified who the three were, right? He said Ruggs, Lamb, and, and Judy. Uh, and he said that, and the question also included in that second part, how big of how big of a deal is the fit of a player like do you guys consider that when you guys are going to take a receiver and and uh mayock said that's one of the things me and gruden 100 percent talk about is the fit of a player uh, you know when we talk about a player like uh jerry judy henry ruggs and cd lamb you have to think about what each of them do because they do different things um, cd lamb's a a yak ride receiver right he makes plays once he has the balls in his hand Jerry Judy's a great route runner. He can make things uh, before the ball's even thrown out. He'll beat a guy and get that separation. Henry Ruggs, on the other hand, has speed. So if he might catch a ball uh, 15 yards downfield, and then he'll take it the, dis the distance, or he'll go deep and he'll throw him the deep pass. Um, but he did talk about that a little bit, and he talked about how the fit for them is very important. But at the same time, he said that uh, the thing that I love about John Gruden's offense is it adapts to the player, right? It adapts to the wide receivers. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of fans kind of talk about that Gruden doesn't do is he doesn't uh, adapt his offense around the talent he has. Uh, Mayock said otherwise, right? Mayock thinks that Gruden does adapt his offense 
to what Mayock or to what uh, Gruden's offense is like, um, which is definitely interesting. You know, there was a lot of things said in this um, in this conference call. I'd highly advise you guys to go check it out. It wasn't that long, um, but I enjoyed it. You know, there's so many things that that was talked about, and honestly, the drafts a week away. You know, we're super close to having at least seven new Raiders, maybe six if we trade up, right? We'll see what happens. Uh, but we, we're right there to having a bunch of new players. And, um, you know, from now to until the draft, I'll probably make a couple of film breakdowns. Uh, and then after the draft, like probably the day or two right after, I'll actually break those players down for you guys. So you guys can watch those players. Um, I'll break them down, talk a little bit about their game, what they do well, what they don't do well. Uh, and then more than that, I'll make sure to... Uh, Get back onto the Raiders film. I haven't been doing any of the Raiders film. I'll probably get back into that middle of May, right, until the season starts. I'll be doing breakdowns of where I think Raider players uh, that are on the roster can improve on, right? Um, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys took from that conference call. If you guys have already checked it out, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.